Hi there, Pete Shevlin here with CNLZ Live on a Friday night. It's 8 p.m. Uh, good evening. Glad to have you here. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks off, but uh, here we are back bigger than ever. Um, so, Richard, uh, hopefully you're over there as well. How have you been over the last couple of weeks? Hey, I've been very good, thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's weird having just a couple of weeks off. It feels like ages of time has passed but we got to get first in with the excuses as to why this didn't happen last week we were both away doing various things on holiday i took my son to london to celebrate his birthday you took your son away i believe pete is that right yeah yeah we went to dorset and um i got bitten by a wasp so um we couldn't do it last week for the weirdest of reasons they're you aggressive ended up in hospital didn't you they're, yeah, I did. They're really aggressive this year. What can I say? <laughs> that is a bit like the dog ate my homework of all the excuses, isn't it? I got bitten by a wasp. I got a bit upset. <laughs> is that basically <laughs> what you're saying? Um, although I suppose going to hospital, I mean, was, that, was it worthwhile use of the NHS's time no, going to hospital? No, it really, it really <laughs> wasn't. Apologies, apologies to everybody at West Mid's um, hospital. I was, I was really out of sorts. <laughs> <laughs> I've just totally wasted their time. Um, yeah, uh, what can I say? It's like, um, it's a weird thing. Like, my whole hand became really massive and my whole arm became huge. And I got a rash on my other arm as well. But um, I'm obviously just not just not made of what I was, you know? Yeah, you, it sounded like you, you were get... turning into the Hulk or something <laughs> as your body was changing. <laughs> It kind of felt like that way, yeah. Anyway, Rich, you've got a couple of um, videos that you've been looking I have, at. Yeah, I've got a couple of videos. I've got one I want to play in a moment, which is uh, from the old TV game show Through the Keyhole, which you're not going to believe. Um, I've got one I want to play you first. I did hope... I, I was doing a radio show last night, and there was a clip that I wanted to use, but I thought better of it because it would have shamed one of my colleagues. Did you hear the very sad news that the actress uh, Diana Rigg died? And, yes, yeah, uh, I did. That, Real, re really gutting. Um, she was 82 years of age, and the newsreader on my programme, bless her, said, very sad news, uh, uh, the death of Diana Rigg, Dame Diana Rigg, at the age of two. Sorry, 82. Oh, and it God. took us about 10 minutes in the studio to stop laughing. I was going to bring that clip, but I thought, no, that would be, <laughs> be cruel to draw attention to it. Um, so the first clip I've got is actually someone eating duck pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> which is quite random, but I love, that's my favourite bit of the Chinese takeaway, is the duck pancakes. And I've never seen anyone eat them like this, and they're eaten so efficiently, I can't wait to order a Chinese and try it myself. Let's take a look at this. <laughs> well, no, I don't eat duck and pancakes the same way as everybody else does while they're at home. I put a bit of everything on the fork, dip it in the sauce, hold the pancake over your face, and just push it all straight in. Just in case you missed it, here I am again, straight in, gal. And one more time, why not straight so we've just seen there, uh, she's just putting the pancake over the top of her mouth and with the fork, um, just uh, scoffing it in. Now, you see, I'd love to try that, but I wouldn't want to be sat beside someone in a restaurant that was doing that because it would put me off. That feels yeah. like very much the type of eating that you do alone, <laughs> doesn't it? It's not a social kind of eating. Can you imagine doing that yeah. over a business lunch? Someone. No, yeah, it's very much uh, kind of Netflix, duck pancakes, scoffing it in. I, I agree with you, it's the best bit of a Chinese meal, without a doubt, without a doubt. Now, like, the second clip I've got for you, this is a gold noldie. In fact, someone labelled it as gold. This is a clip from the old Lloyd Grossman, David Frost game show. It was called Through the Keyhole, where they used to get Lloyd Grossman to nose around someone's house, a celebrity's house usually, and they used to film bits like books on shelves and videos and sofas and cars and say, can you guess who the celebrity is? And at the beginning of each episode, they would reveal who the celebrity was so you could see at home, but the guys in the studio didn't know. And this is obviously a classic episode. Take a look at this. <laughs> Who'd live in a house like this? David, it's over to you. Well, thank you very much indeed, Lloyd. And now for our home and studio audience. Here's whose house it is. <laughs> I don't know, but what happened to Ian and Shirley Richter 
former former Iraqi hostages. What whatever happened to those guys? Who on earth was the researcher that thought, you know what? Right, last week we had whoever, you know, Philip Schofield's house on. This week, let's have an Iraqi captive. You know, someone that was held prisoner abroad. That that'll do. They're kind of celebrity, aren't they? And I bet do you think you Do you think the, the Richters the were really big celebrities back in I don't know, nineteen eighty nine or whenever that clip was from? I think they probably had a book deal or something out, and they must have flung a press release at the production department, and they must have looked at that and thought, "Oh, that's easy, isn't it? They want to come on and plug their book or something." Let's <laughs> go on. Um, but it's the shock, isn't it? It's, it's the music it's as the well. Shock. It's like, let's find out who it is. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> Iraqi cafes, former Iraqi prisoner. Just awful, absolutely awful. How was that entertainment? It's mad. It was daytime <laughs> telly. I don't think it was through the time. through the keyhole was evening telly. Yeah, yeah, it was on evening in the evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez, yeah. well, things have certainly changed for the better, haven't they? Oh, well, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Um, well, without without further ado, we should introduce our guests. Let's see if we've got them. Ah, the magic of Zoom. Um, Scott Cruz uh, from Ohio. Hello, you. Hello. And, hello, and and also Jamie Labesta um, from Reading. Hello. And Jamie, you're originally from Jersey, is that right? Yeah, um, little tiny island between uh, the UK and France. So that's why my name is so difficult to say. Yeah. <laughs> I, I obviously didn't say it right again. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how you pronounce it. Uh, it's Le Bolestier. Le Bolestier. That's um, not a Jersey name, is it? That's not Jerry A or anything like that. Uh, it's uh, Cross Bowman in French. So, you know, that was pretty cool when I was in primary school. Yeah. <laughs> and um, nice. is it true that, is it, is it that's where this comes from, with the, uh, the French versus the English, that something to do with having your fingers left after pulling the, the, the bow back? <laughs> if it is, I've never heard it. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> All right. Who knows? We've got a lot of like weird archaic laws that still exist, though. Like, I think you're allowed to shoot a Frenchman with a crossbow on a specific beach at a specific date or something somewhere. So it wouldn't surprise me if that's where it's from. Um, how how do you find out more about this this weird this weird thing that goes on on this specific date on this? Beach? Uh, I, I don't know. You'd have to go there and read the. There's loads of like, you know, Jersey Facebook groups. And there stuff. are really weird laws in Jersey. I lived there for a year. I did um, programs on BBC Radio Jersey there, and mm. it was that there was a couple of problems with living on Jersey. The first problem was one of the only things to do was drink. So there was a lot yeah. of people that were very passionate about drinking. Big alcohol problems. <laughs> the second issue with Jersey, actually there's three, the second issue was that you couldn't go 24 hours without someone saying, you know, I think this was in an episode of Bergerac. <laughs> um, and if it wasn't that, it was, did you know that my dad was in an episode of Bergerac? Or my uncle was in an episode of Bergerac? Or let's go to that pub, because I'm pretty sure that was in an episode of Bergerac. And the third problem was you talk about archaic laws. I can remember none of the nightclubs used to be open on a Sunday. And yeah. there was some kind of rule that you couldn't dance in Jersey on a Sunday. And the, way, the only way they get around it on a bank holiday was you were allowed to dance if there was food present at the time as food being served. So a lot of the nightclubs would open, but they'd have a cauldron of soup on the dance floor. And that is the thing. The only way around it. It was, it was crazy. Do they still do that, the old cauldron of soup? I mean, I didn't know that's why it existed, but now I look back, there is always a cauldron of soup. Yeah. <laughs> and you didn't think that was weird at the time? Well, it's just what I knew. <laughs> <laughs> and Scott, you probably don't know anything, any of the cultural references here that we've been talking yeah, about, it's Bergerac all right. and Jersey. <laughs> uh, Jersey to you is, is a place in New York, probably. Yeah, yeah. just south of New York. <laughs> <laughs> Totally different. And but I don't know if I can even top that at all. I mean, being able to shoot people with crossbows, I'm just going to have to hang back and just uh, just let him have the show. And how is it over there in Ohio at the moment? 
Uh, it's not too bad. You know, uh, we're kind of living on, kind of established that new normal of uh, what, you know, the world's going to be like with everything going on and just moving forward slowly. And um, and you, you said to us earlier that there's very much 50% of the people are like, there's nothing going on, it's all fine, we're just going to live our lives. And then 50% of the people are very much, actually, we've got to take this seriously. Yeah, it seems it's it's rather unfortunate. It's 50% want to have your masks on, be distant, and the other 50% is like, well, if yours works, why should I have to wear one? It's like, really? Yeah. Like, Let's just is all it, do it together, get it over with. Is it with, polarizing and... families like uh, kind of Brexit does over here? Does it like polarize like uncles uh, and aunts? Yeah, yeah. I will say I definitely have uh, deleted a lot of Facebook friends over the last uh, couple months just <laughs> really? wanting to wow. see them uh, share stuff that I didn't you know, agree with or wow. you know, things like that. Wow, it must be pretty insane. <laughs> and and like, how is it in your? So you've you've got um, just yourself and your wife and uh, Piper the dog. Um, yeah. Any any kind of uh, you know problems there when it comes to social distancing, <laughs> or are you all okay? Uh, with no, each not really. Uh, we both uh, have jobs that were essential, so we kind of have just been living life the same way as before. Um, uh -huh. Happy to do it. Uh, so not much has changed for us, but I know other people have been, you know, locked at home and working from home and not liking being with their family members as much as they have been or housemates and things like that. So, but I have not had any issues. It's been, it's been nice to kind of just work and then come home and relax and do the next thing. And I kind of feel like you probably have got quite a big uh, garden or like outdoor space that you can use as well. Cause yeah, just hang out, get some fresh air. Yeah. And the other thing you've got, let's not ignore this, you've got a dog. Yes. <laughs> Where is she? Come here. Piper. Oh, I see, see if she'll right actually there. listen. She's kind of close, but she's just staring at me. Maybe she'll make an appearance in a little bit. But and she's quite she's young? She's looking at me like I'm crazy. Uh, yeah, she's about a year and a half. So there's still a little bit of a puppy in her. Cool. Well, Scott, um, if you can't get Piper, then you may as well uh, play something... You know, play us a tune or something. We might as well, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what hopefully we're here for. Uh, yeah, hopefully she'll make a visit later, but uh, until now, um, the first song I was going to play is uh, the song that I released uh, about a month and a half ago. So it's my newest song. It's called Speechless, and it is about uh, my wife. So that's uh, always a good thing. But S Sweet. And, and it's about how you met, is it? Uh, yeah, so it's a little bit about... Um, you know, how we met in our first date and then kind of it just makes little references to all the little things that we would kind of do that kind of helped us fall more in love. I guess you could say, you know, just the little all the little things you do, you know, you're a true romantic. Now, you're <laughs> I playing, try. I'm I'm going to have to um, disappear because I just realized my phone isn't right next to me. And of course, uh -oh. I need my phone right next to me. So um, so hopefully I'll be exactly, what, three and a half minutes? Is that how long? Yeah, time? roughly. And when I get back, I'm going to tell you how amazing it was and how you awesome. must have the, the most romantic <laughs> relationship that I've ever heard. Um, but, but yeah, please. Bye. All right, sounds good. Oh, by the way, what's it called? Oh, it's called Speechless. Speechless, wicked. All right. Eyes met, heart skipped a beat, I lost my breath while you walked to me, I knew then and there that this would be it. Long walks sitting around, I get lost in the way that your voice sounds, I fell fast for you, I'll admit. Whoa, whoa, whoa it doesn't matter how far. Whoa, 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 I'll come running where you are Cause you leave me speechless, ah With every little thing that you do You're killing me with sweetness, ah And it makes me fall harder for you And I'm scared that I'm not scared yet And after all the feelings we shared I know it's true I can't get my mind off you oh. I can't get my mind off you It's the little things that make my heart run And I waking up to text you right at 501 I hear my phone chirp and my face lights up You're my sunshine of my darkest days You're the soundtrack that my heart plays I'm addicted to you and I can't get enough 
Whoa, whoa, it doesn't matter how far. Whoa, whoa, I'll come running where you are. Cause you leave me speechless, ah. With every little thing that you do, you're killing me with sweetness, ah. And it makes me fall harder for you. And I'm scared that I'm not scared yet. And after all the feelings we shared, I know it's true. I can't get my mind off you. Oh. Cause you are my everything, the reason that I wake up The rock of sand beside me when life just seems to get tough No matter what I do, I think of you And ever since our first date, I knew you'd be my soulmate Just tell me how long I know you're worth the wait No matter what I do, I think of you Cause you leave me speechless, ah With every little thing that you do You're killing me with sweetness, ah And it makes me fall harder for you And I'm scared that I'm not scared yet And after all the feelings we shared I know it's true I can't get my mind off you I can't get my mind off you Very nice. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, thank you. We'll draw attention to the fact that Pete wasn't going to get his phone and he's actually grabbing a beer, but we'll talk about that in a moment. That was a gorgeous, gorgeous song. Now, there's someone in my mind that you remind me of. Who do you most get told after gigs who you remind people of? I feel like I always get told Ed Sheeran. I was going to say Ed Sheeran. And I, I didn't Which is want to always say, a good thing. Yeah, I did want to say it first, though, in case you go, oh, why is it always Ed Sheeran? Why does it have to be Ed Sheeran? But it really is, isn't it? And I think that's got to be a positive, hasn't it? Because It has been, to be, right? Yeah, it has to be, definitely. So that's a positive. You know, people say that. What other names you get thrown at you as well? Um... I'm trying to think of other people specifically. That's mainly the big one that everyone always says. And I, I always used to think it was just because I played guitar and had red hair. But, you know, just writing songs, it seems to kind of come through a little bit too like that. Yeah, I think it's the mood and the tone and the texture yeah. of the songs as well, isn't it? And the way that you, you sing them, you know, really quite into it, quite close into the mic. Um, and, of course, the guitar work as well. What comes first to you? Do you do the composition or do you do the lyrics first? How do you plan a song like that, particularly one that's quite emotional? It seems to be usually the lyrics will come first. I kind of, when I write the lyrics, I'll get the tune in my mind, and then I'll just find the chords that kind of match with it, go with it uh, the best way. But whenever I write songs, it's always weird because I can either sit down and write an entire song in five minutes, or it'll take me five, six months to finish every single line in it. So uh, thankfully, this was a song that only took me about, you know, probably a good half hour to an hour. Once I actually sat down and was like, all right, this is what I want to do, but... Um, Usually it's the lyrics will come first. Cool. Well, that's quite quick. When do you reach the point where you think, right, that's it, it's done, walk away, that's it, I've got there? Um, usually, I, don't, I feel like I, when I'm actually writing, I'll have ideas, and I tend to scrap things a lot before I actually put them down. So I feel like I do a lot of the you know, fixing things up and getting rid of the bad stuff originally. So it's quite difficult to work with myself just because I'm always sitting there like, well, this line works, but it's not good enough. So let's just get rid of it and uh, keep working, keep working. Cool. And who's the first person you played that track to? Must have been a family member, surely. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I actually recorded it and then sent it to my wife because we were uh, dating long distance at the time. So Aww. when we were uh, we – couple thousand miles apart and uh you know just trying to get in or trying to uh communicate and just sent that like hey as a little reminder that you know even though we're far away we're still going strong and everything worked out perfectly you know there's about to be loads of women watching this thinking oh, what a lovely gesture and loads of men <laughs> watching this thinking darn why has he done that you know it makes step it up everybody else look, look awful yeah we've got to step up our game now scott that was brilliant really enjoyed that pete you missed a trick there and all just because you were sneaking out to grab a beer <laughs> I can hear you. Yeah. Well, look, Scott, that was fantastic. We'll come back to you for your second song in a moment. Jamie, right. we haven't had your first song tonight. What have you got? What's the inspiration? Where did it come from? Uh, so the first song that I'm going to play is called About Time. 
Um, it's the first track off of uh, the album that I recorded in lockdown. Um, so this isn't released yet. Neither of the songs that I'm playing are actually. Um, so nice. that's kind of fun. Yeah. And what was the inspiration behind it? About time, lockdown? Is there something about being trapped in lockdown? Something about time passing? Yeah, I, I, the whole album is sort of about um, time passing. I'm uh, also quite like a stickler for like being on time to stuff. So I think it was like me both writing about sort of the things I was feeling at the time and then also myself um, sort of how sort of like, like anxious I get if someone's like two minutes late. To something. Yeah, no, I'm with you on that. Don't like tardiness. So yeah. basically, <laughs> if you're a tardy person, this song isn't for you. It's against you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, about time. Give it to us. Cool. Thank you. It's about time, she said, that I got mine instead. Cause I have seen a dark It's about time and what it means. It's about why we sow the seeds. I have seen a dark age. So right now, I'm not really here. It's too bright now, and I'm not the
Beautiful. Really, really yeah, yeah. lovely. Gosh, two really heartfelt songs that we've heard uh, this evening. That was fantastic, though, Jamie. That was great. And uh, for me, I was getting vibes of Gordon Lightfoot, Bob Dylan, a bit of Lou Reed in there as well. Um, I asked Scott, you know, I've got to ask you, who do you get compared to? Um, I... I get Nick Drake quite a lot, which oh, is cool. Yes. Yeah. He's he's a big one for me. Um, yeah, um, Johnny Flynn a little bit bo bo vocal wise, um, so that's cool as well because I love him. So, yeah. Beautiful. And again, something I just asked Scott is who was the first person you played that track to? Um, probably my partner. Um, so she plays clarinet with me um, live when I do shows. Um, so a lot of the times I'll sort of like sit and write a song by myself and then sort of throw it out there and be like, right, put something on this, please. Um, so yeah. And you can, you can trust her opinion, her judgment and... She yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've played in bands together probably since we met, to be honest. So um, yeah, we play in another band called No Feathers at the moment. So yeah, we'll, we'll throw songs together and sort of be like, is that mine or is that... Do I give it to the fans, sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah, don't have the Lennon McCartney arguments quite yet. Be yeah. that until you get a little further down the line, I guess. Yeah, not quite. Ar arguing <laughs> over the royalties. Um, Pete, I mean, my goodness, we've had we've got two incredibly soppy guys on the program tonight, both writing <laughs> songs for their partners and sending them and playing them to them first of all. Puts us to shame, really, doesn't it? I know. Yeah. What can we do, lowly radio producers? Um, I really enjoyed that that minor key as well that you had. Uh, at, at that point there, Jamie, it was really great. I really enjoyed that. Kind of, it oh, sounded very different from, from what we'd normally hear. Oh, cheers. Yeah, there's a um, couple of modes in there. It's fun. So, something totally different now. So uh, our viewers will be able to hear our incredibly cheesy music. Um, and this is a, a little quiz that we occasionally like to do. And, um, and this quiz was kind of inspired by Service Station or Cheese uh, that we did a few weeks ago. Um, and this one is called Gin or Junction. Um, this is basically, <laughs> is it a gin or is it a junction somewhere, actually, I'm sorry about this, uh, Scott, somewhere, somewhere in the UK. Um, the, the gins are actually international, um, but the uh, but the junctions are very much a British thing. So, um, so you're just going to have to guess as we go. Oh yeah, we got this. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, Rich, you're first. So, uh, so the first one is an easy one if you're a gin drinker. Uh, Rich, the first one is Monkey Forty Seven. Is it a gin or is it a junction? I've got no idea. I'm not a gin drinker. I once had a gin and lemonade on Lost My Voice, but I'm going to say that <laughs> does sound like a gin. Awesome. It is a gin. All right. The, the next one is called Monkey's Jump. There's a monkey theme right now. There's a little <laughs> monkey theme going on. Monkey's, Monkey's Jump. jump. Sounds like, that sounds like a junction in Dorset. Whoa, you are on fire, man. Uh, it's actually a roundabout. It's a roundabout in Dorchester. So, yeah, you're... I've probably driven past that later times. That's why. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, another one for you. Glitter Muff. Glitter Muff? Glitter Muff. This is probably a type of gin that's served in a particular type of late night nightclub. Um, <laughs> I'd say I'd say glitter muff is definitely a gin. Wow, you are on fire! Yeah, it's not really? really a junction, is it? Can you imagine Already. that? The travel news. There's been a snarl up at glitter muff. You can't have that. It's it's from Donegal, um, and it's from the Muff Liquor Company. Um, all right, so here we go. Keep going. It's Ivy Bush. Ivy Bush. Is it a junction of some kind, or is it a gin? Gin or junction? Junction. Junction. <laughs> junction. Uh, there we go. It is. It's a crossroads. It's in Birmingham. Four out of four so far, Richard. Cockadobby. Cockadobby. Is it a gin 
Or is it a junction? General Junction. Oh, good job. This sounds a bit Welsh. Um, I'm going to go with Junction. Unbelievable. <laughs> five out of five. Wow. Which Never got incredible. five out of five. No, it's, it's, it's a new thing. <laughs> Richard Laddo, five out of five. Now, Jamie, are you ready for this? Well, I was until that performance. <laughs> <laughs> Big Dipper. Is it a gin or a junction? It's, it's a gin. It's just too easy. It is. It's a gin. Uh, it has aromas of the fairground. It has sugary smells with machinery and dirt. The the website actually says machinery and dirt. Uh, Much like a junction. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. Uh, titty ho, titty ho. Is it a junction or is it a gin? Titty ho, titty ho. No one's made that. That's a junction. Amazing. It's in North <laughs> Northamptonshire. Um, nice. you're, uh, wow, this is this is going to go well. Um, slack bottom, slack bottom. Is it a gin or a junction? I oh, yeah. think that's a junction as well. Mm. That's giving me Dave had that vibes. Yep, it's in Hebden Bridge, West Yorkshire. <laughs> Well, um, Cold River, Cold River, Gin or Junction? I'm going Gin, that sounds like... That sounds like Incredible, it's a handcrafted <laughs> American spirit, yes. In a Ting Tong, this is going to get you, in a Ting Tong. One word, two words. Three words, actually, in a Ring. Ting wow. Tong. Um... Gin. Uh, no. It's in Budley Sorterton in Devon. Wow. Um, yeah, four, four out of five there. Scott, let's see what you can do. You, you're as long at, as I can get one. <laughs> that's my goal. You, you are at a disadvantage. You've probably <laughs> never even tasted gin, I'm, I'm assuming. I don't uh, know. Not often, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very, it's a very English drink, I would say. Um, wobbly wheel, wobbly wheel. I feel like that has to be a junction. Amazing. Yeah, it's in Kenford, Kenford in Devon. Um, Sea sucker, Sea sucker. We're gonna go gin. Wow, it is. It's a gin. From Texas. Ooh. Very close. Well, kind of close to where you are. Um, strange donkey. Strange donkey. Gin or junction? I want it to be a junction, but it's going to be a gin. It is. It's a gin from Antwerp. It has an international blend of citrus from all continents. Ah, uh, great name this is. Um, the Busted. The Busted. Or the bus That's going to be a junction. <laughs> it is. It's a crossroads Ooh. in Salisbury Plain. And um, amazingly, you're doing very, very well. Golden balls. Golden balls. Gin or junction? Uh, we're going to go gin. Five out of five. Scott, you've fallen at the very last round. Oh. Well... Our winner today, Richard Latto. How does it feel? Storming Amazing. Uh, Amazing. I think you want to try gin again. And hopefully I won't lose my voice this time. <laughs> Sorry, you makes you want to try gin, but... Let's try gin again, because uh, I've only ever really tried it once. I didn't like it. Gin and lemonade. Yeah. Gin and tonic, really, shouldn't it? Yeah, um, gin and tonic all over the place, with maybe a slice of lemon or something like that. I remember my wife said she, she wanted to really get into drinking gin because there was this big fad where it was uh, fashionable amongst trendy women and she made me go out and buy loads of tonic and we had all these bottles of tonic and I bought a bottle of gin and she took one zip and said I hate it and I know I hate it so I had all this tonic and I didn't know what to do with it so I ended up taking it into work and giving it out to some of my alcoholic friends. <laughs> 
There's plenty of those at the BBC. Well, well, thanks everybody for you know, indulging me in that uh, Junction audience. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, now then, Scott, back to business. Um, what's the what's the final song that you're going to play for us tonight? So the second song I'm going to play is called Something Unpredictable. This is the first song that I ever actually released and is the name of the first album that I released as well. And that title just reminds me that of, of another tune. Isn't there another tune called So that? I got the inspiration from uh, the Green Day song, Good Riddance, Time of Your Life. Uh, there's a line in there that says there's something unpredictable, but in the end it's right. And I just kind of took that idea and the whole song is about you know i'm doing something new that i've never done releasing music writing music and whatever happens happens i don't know what's going to happen but let's find out together so that's kind of the whole um story behind it got it yeah that's the line love that green green day tune it's it's uh it's really good when was that that must have been 20 years old or something by now it's yeah it's got to be pretty old now yeah cool well take it away can't wait all right. Open up your eyes to find the time is passing you by Another day, week, month, and you're not in the front You're still stuck in a slump and you just need to confront All your aspirations and dreams Figure out what it all means Cause people will tell you no, that's when it's time to show All you got, put it out on the table Go and make your impression to the label Cause this is the start of something done before Minor twist, put a mind of my own and a Blank pages in this storybook Slowly waiting their time to show And uh, I don't know what'll happen But you don't know until you try Yeah, this is the start of something unpredictable Something unpredictable Born into a family of hope Whose only show me nothing ever but support with the weight of the world on my shoulders I just hate to disappoint Striving to be just as great as I can And I'll be damned if I can get there using what I have It's not a matter of when, it's a matter of how Cause this is the start of something done before Minor twist, put a mind to my own And a, a blank pages in the storybook So they wait in their time to show And a, I don't know what'll happen but you don't know until you try Yeah, this is the start of something unpredictable Something unpredictable Whoa. There's never an end in sight Cause as long as I'll be here, I'll continue to fight Take all you got, put it out on the table there's never an end in sight Cause as long as I'll be here I'll continue to write Go and make your impression to the label Cause this is something done before Minor twist, but words on my own And a blank pages in the storybook Slowly waiting their time to show And a, I don't know what'll happen But you don't know until you try Yeah, this is the start of something unpredictable Something unpredictable. Whoa. Fantastic. That's a real shot of energy, isn't it? You you must be so keen, Scott, to get back out and get gigging because I imagine that's the type of track that goes down well with the crowd. Yes, usually uh, high energy. That's what most of the songs I like to play are more up tempo. I feel like that's what I end up writing a lot more of is just energy. Let's get at it and let's go. So how do you craft the set? Do you just go straight in on something that's high energy, or do you try? Yeah, I try it? to. I usually kind of start with that song because that's the first one that people would know, and kind of just go in, and then um, I usually try and keep a little um, up tempo with a couple other songs, and throw maybe a softer one in there every once in a while. But for the most part, it's all high energy. No, that's great. And what's the most thing, the biggest thing that you miss about gigging? There must be one aspect whilst you've been through lockdown and you're thinking, God, I just, I, I've so yearned to get out there to do this because. 
I just really like being able to see, you know, the look on people's faces and just them feel the high energy. And you can kind of sometimes see them escape. You know, they're not thinking about their everyday life. They're just sitting there enjoying the time and, you know, having a drink or eating or something like that and just, you know, enjoying the moment. So you, you enjoy the attention is what you're saying while you're up on stage. A little stage. bit, yeah. You also like distracting people. That's a really yes. lovely way to look at it. That's great. Well, look, we'll ask you for your, for your details soon because hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll all be going out and gigging again soon at some point in the near future. Perfect. Um, and we'll ask uh, you in a moment how people can find you online. But, Pete, um, what do you think of that? Yeah, I loved it. And I was trying to, I was trying to like, as we do, pigeonhole Scott into some kind of musicianship. Um, and I was thinking, is it rock? Is it folk? What, what, what would you say, Scott? How, how would it's, you like your music to come about? It's really hard to explain. I like to kind of think of like the singer-songwriter aspect of, you know, just up here with an acoustic guitar. Um, also can kind of be elements of like indie as well as pop. When you listen to the actual like recordings that I have released, it's a lot of guitar with live drums, with synths and kind of just meshing um, a lot of different genre elements together and making what I like, I guess. I listen to pretty much everything, so I take uh, bits and pieces of elements from everything I hear. Yeah, great stuff. And, uh, and Jamie, your last song. Have you, what have you got prepared for us there? Uh, it's a song called Never An Hour Early. Um, uh, it's kind of inspired by, um, you know, Iron and Wine, the... Uh, yeah. Singer, songwriter. Yep. So he did um, an interview, I think it was a um, KEXP session, where he said that phrase. He was talking about moving back to Seattle, I think it was. And he was like, you know me, never an hour early. Um, and I had no idea what he meant, like no idea. And I Googled it and I can't find out. Like I've never heard anyone say it before. I don't think anyone ever, has ever said it since. I don't know what it means, So, but I liked it. I thought it was cool. So I kind of nicked it and uh, put it in a song, basically. And is that what it's called? Never an hour early? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of time based you know, no, this whole album. You you've definitely got a time thing going on. You you've got like yeah. this anxiety thing going with with uh, with time <laughs> yeah. and and the pressures think, of it. Yeah, well, I tend to write in chunks. Like I'll write a whole EP rather than I'll write four songs or I'll write an album rather than odd songs. So I think I'm normally thinking about one specific topic and I'll tend to write around that. So at the moment, that's what I appear to be writing about. So. Yeah, because it's funny, like you were, you were talking about never being late and, and, I, and I get that, but actually never being an hour early kind of means more yeah. to me in some ways. But I think that's sort of like part of it is that I should aspire to stop being an hour early to things yeah. because it just makes me feel worse. <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of taking that and sort of turning it into like a positive thing for myself, really, rather than for a general mantra. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Why? Yeah. Take it away. Cool, thank you.
just want to be on time and as for why well why not never now really am I oh my Go to that one place you don't think anyone would find. Ah, ah, Just want to be on time and it's the why. Well, why not? Never now, really am I? Oh, am I? Brilliant. How soothing is that? I feel like I, I just want to go straight to bed. I feel like I'll be meditating or something. That's fantastic, wasn't beautiful. it? Beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. I loved it. Well done, Jamie. That was great. And what kind of variety have you got on the album? Is everything in a similar kind of mood and tone to that? I know you said the whole album's about time, so has everything got a kind of feel like that? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a sort of similar vibe, lots of um, like open tuning acoustic stuff. Um, I kind of, I'm a big fan of Bonnie there as well. Um, so I've taken quite a lot of inspiration production wise. So there's, um, you know, tons of vocal layering and there's the occasional weird synth. Um, there's one track with like a bossa nova groove under it, which is cool. But apart from that, it's all pretty, pretty similar. I've got a choir as well on there. So it's a bit of everything. <laughs> And which tracks do people point out to you as their favourites on the album? Because you, you're about to have your favourites, but is it the same as the guys that are actually enjoying listening to it? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not out yet, so I couldn't really tell you. Playing it live, I mean, um, people tend to like that song, and I'm a big fan of it too. So. But yeah, um, Travelling Salesman from my last EP is probably a favourite. Um, yeah, yeah. Cool. So when's the album actually going to be out for people to purchase? Because that's the multi-million dollar yeah. question you want me to ask, and we're going to ask it. Um, I actually didn't want you to, because I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> this is a chance you've I'm so sorry. I know. Um, we've just finished the artwork for it. Um, so I'll, I'll be updating people soon. I'll have a date within the next month or so i imagine okay well look if people want updates and they want to find out all the latest information about you and the latest on the album where's the best place for them to go online um probably my facebook page so um jamie lavalistia at uh, facebook.com <laughs> um 
uh, or my Instagram page, which is at Jamie Lebolist here, or my Twitter, which is the same. <laughs> Fantastic. And Scott, yeah. what about yourself? Where's the best place for people to find you online? Uh, any of your social media sites, so Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Scott Cruz Music, uh, just how my name's spelled with music after, and that's where I am. Nice. Ooh. And Pete will share those, won't we, online, and people will be able to find the videos uh, during the week as well. Ahead, if you want to go back and have another listen to the songs, we'll be uh, putting them all up on the relevant channels. Both, both, both Scott and and Jamie, so talented, like brilliant. Thanks so much for coming. And um, this is CNLZ, and uh, join us again next week when we'll have two more amazing guests. My thanks to Jamie Lavastia and also Scott Cruz and um, Richard Latter, of course. And uh, you know, this is CNLZ. We're here. We're helping to support um, acoustic music through this very tough time where you can't be on stage and and see those acts that we would normally see. So, um, you know, uh, if you see any music that you like tonight, please go onto their Facebook pages and, and check them out because they'll really appreciate it, and so will we. All right, all the best. See you next week.